whenever you make an, any kind of mask, you want contrast, whether it's black, white background, color background, whatever you want maximum contrast between whatever you're extracting and the background. Sometimes you have the luxury of using your red, green, blue channel or the image. Here's not the case. So I'm going to make a new background, convert it to black and white, increase my reds, my yellows, my blue really doesn't have that much effect. I'm going to throw a levels adjustment on here to increase my blacks and maybe brighten up the whites. and I'm looking for just the contrast between the edge of my mask and my background without losing any of the detail. That looks pretty good. I'm going to use calculations now. Uh, first I want to make an invert on my background and choosing my source layers as the black and white conversion I'm just going to try some different blend modes to see which one is going to retain the most amount of texture and give me the most amount of contrast. We are only looking for black on white, so I don't care about the details of the face or what's going to be inside the mask. I'm only looking at the edge. Uh, in this case, the screen works pretty good. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to make a new Alpha 1 channel. And that is what I'm going to use to make my mask out of. My blacks I'm going to try to increase them a little bit and increase the brightness to give me more distinction more contrast between the black and white and take my eyedropper tool for the shadow area and set a new black I lost a little bit of detail on the the white hair I'm just going to mess around with my levels until I get that looking good and that looks pretty fine we'll click OK and switch to my lasso tool and just fill that with white and just go around the inside of, of my mask fill in those sections with white switch over to the brush tool just brush around the edges I'm not worried about the edge right now I'm gonna take care of that in a, in a minute I'm just getting most of the field that's inside my mask and that looks pretty good so to clean up the edge I'm actually gonna use some native dodge and burn tools that are here and working in the mid-tone range at an exposure of 50 percent. I'm going to go around and try to increase anything that's not white, anything that's gray or less than white, as long as I have that set for mid-tones it's going to convert all that over to white. Let's go all the way around the edge and Try not to lose some detail in the hair. A little spot right here. I'm switch to the brush tool. Just fill that in with white. Switch back to my dodge and burn tool. I'm working in the dark section. I'm only working on the mid-tones area here. That's can retain some of the the white highlights. And I'm going to switch back and forth using my dodge and burn tool just to work along this edge just to get rid of some of this cloudiness in the black section try to turn that completely to black and to get the most amount that I can out of all my white texture around the edge of the mask. Well, the more time that you spend on the Alpha 1 channel uh, the less time you have to spend correcting it when you do eventually make it turn it into a mask. But this is looking pretty good. I'm bringing a lot of the detail in. Again right here, switching between the dodge and burn, get rid of some of that questionable area that's not black and it's not white. A couple little spots right here to fix up. Now this area of the hair was not that crisp. It was a little bit blurred out. So I know I'm going to lose a little bit of detail in this area, but the more I can retain without getting that white cloudiness, which is actually a, kind of a combination of gray. It's mostly gray. That looks pretty good though. Uh, like that, I'm going to control click on that, turn it into a selection. I don't want to use my background copy. I'll turn that off. I want to use the original image. 
We're going to make a new layer, a solid color layer, and just fill it with black. And that will become a new background. I'll just invert my mask. And as you can see, let me zoom in a tiny little bit here. All the edge of that mask is retained and I really didn't lose that much flyaway hair. Just go around, take a little bit closer look around the edge of my mask. So for the most part that's looking pretty good. Like I said, the more time that you spend on the alpha channel, the less work you have to do here. I'm just going to grab my dodge and burn tool again and work it in mid-tones. Just kind of work this edge to and see if I can't get rid of a little bit of that fuzziness along the edge of the mask edge and bring back a little bit more detail that I lost in some of these flyaway hairs. So although it's very subtle at this point, I'll click it on and off, you can you can see there is a little bit more detail brought back. Let me just work this section over here. Turn that on and off. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference, but it does bring some of those hairs back that got lost. I'm going to alt click on my mask. And this is where the that cloudiness comes in that I was talking about. So if I switch over to highlights and burn on my on my white section. Excuse me, dodge on my white section. I can turn all that gray into pure white. I want to stay away from the edge of the hair. I don't want to lose any of the, the edges of that mask. So I'm going to try to bring some of that back by switching to mid-tones with my burn tool and just try to bring back some of that detail there. So that, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to all click on my mask again and continue on with my highlights on my dodge tool and just try to eliminate all that fuzzy gray that is going to show some of the original background. I want to hide as much of that original background as I can to make a, a good mask edge. I'm starting to lose a little bit of the detail here so we're going to try to bring some of that back. I work in, in my mid-tones Let's try to brush some of that in. The midtones is going to, uh, if I if I go over to highlights and I brush on here, what it's going to do is it's going to turn too much of that mask. It's going to reveal too much of that mask to real reveal the underneath. So I don't want to use that. I want to work in my midtones. So anything that's not black or white will be converted to black and white. So any gray, any shade of gray it will be a clear distinction between black and white. As long as you stay with your mid-tones at 50%, you can work the edge of the mask and try to retain as much of that texture as you possibly can. So the more time that you spend in the alpha channel working on this edge, then the less work you have to do here. But you can use the native dodge and burn tool just to get a nice distinction on your your mask after you've made the mask. And you can go ahead and apply whatever background image you want. It doesn't. I just did a solid color here. I wasn't happy with the black background before. It was wasn't really black. Some of the light spilled over onto the black background. Um, but as long as what you're replacing in the background is dark, if you're starting with a dark background already, then there's not going to be too too much noticeable change. But if you're going to try to put a light background on there then that's not really going to work. So you can't take something that shot on a black background and put it into a light scene. But using a using a solid color mask, I can, I can go in and change the color to whatever I want. If I apply something light, you'll see the edge of the mask. But as long as I stick with a darker color, then it looks really natural. Most of the hair texture is retained. Um, if I go with a lighter color on there, it's not going to look that realistic. So I'm just going to switch over to dark, and that's it. So good luck. And 
I'll see you next time.